It's 88.5 FM WVOF in Fairfield, Connecticut. Fairfield University Radio. That is a great track coming from an outstanding record. That's the way I grew up on music. And that's Chocolate Music, the latest and greatest from Chocolate Music. People want the same things. It's just for fun. You can groove on that one. i got to ask him if there's a 20-minute version of that one. Stevie Martin is the leader of the band Chocolate Music, and he is kind enough to join us once again from Los Angeles, California, I believe. How you doing, yes, Stevie? Sir. I'm doing beautifully, sir. How you doing, Joe? Thanks for having me, sir. Yeah, always creating great music, and uh, man, you you're playing everything just about on this record yourself with a few friends. Yeah, you know, you know what they say, necessity is a mother. And, uh, <laughs> right. and uh, you got to do what you got to do. I can't afford everybody I want. Mm-hmm. So, but it's so, all good, man. It's all good. Now, now, now since you're a multi-instrumentalist, producer, and, and, and vocalist, what, what was the first instrument you ever uh, tried to have a go at when you were a kid? Um, actually, the uh, the very first thing uh, that I played was uh, was a uh, guitar. Uh huh. Yeah, that was. <clears throat> excuse me. That's all right. Sorry about that. No problem. I, had, I was having a human moment. <laughs> hey, this is real radio. <laughs> We've had a lot of them on this show. Well, dig it. Never do, never do a live radio interview and eat trail mix simultaneously, my people. <laughs> right. But the first, <laughs> the first uh, instrument I was, I actually played was uh, a guitar that uh, my older brother gave me. He bought it um, for me from a pawn shop in Norwalk, California. Oh, okay. Now, now where's Norwalk? Because we have one in Norwalk about 10 minutes from here, but I'm in California. Right. Where is that? Well, Norwalk, California is a suburb. It's probably about uh, about uh, 20 minutes east of L.A. Okay. Yeah, so that's the first thing uh, that uh, I picked up. And uh, my my good buddy, Warren Hibbert, <laughs> who uh-huh. was, uh, he was a friend of mine in the seventh grade, uh, he actually uh, was really into the Beatles at the time. And... Uh, and uh, I, you know, I um, actually learned by just hanging out with my my buddy Warren, who uh, I haven't seen forever. So Warren, uh, if you're out there, hey, hi and thanks, man. Yeah, from from the Beatles to the chocolate music and everything in between, is it, it's been a really cool journey for you. Oh yes, sir. Yes, sir. It has, man. And um, you know, I'm still digging the journey. Uh, you know, I'm actually, it, it, it's funny these days, I'm actually, at this moment in time, extra excited about making music, man. You know, I'm excited by a lot of stuff, you know. It, it's, you know, the, with the whole with the whole inter, internet thing, it's just, you know, broken down a lot of walls, made a lot of things possible, and, you know, just turned me on to a lot of... Um, you know, just different, really cool music. So, you know, my head is exploding right now. Now, now you're out in one of the centers of music, Los Angeles, and, uh, you know, working with chocolate music. And, and uh, how about the current, you're, you're excited about the current scene in, in Los Angeles. How, how about the live music scene out there? Ha, has it changed for the better or is it even tougher than uh, it's been? You know what? I would say from this standpoint, I I think it's changed from the better, and the reason I say that is because of two really beautiful events that happened out here in Long Beach, man. They had a, a couple of funk festivals. Oh, I think I saw some pictures about Tell Tell us about that. Oh, man, it, it, it was awesome. Um, you know, they had uh, two stages going on, and... Um, it was just a well-organized event. The people there were really cool. Um, one band would come on, and uh, pretty much as soon as that band was done, you know, the other one would uh, would come on. And it it was awesome, man. There were there were um, a bunch of uh, bands that I hadn't heard uh, before, you know, that I got got a chance to hear it, and then there were, uh, they had the original Stone City band there, actually, and uh, Weapon of Choice was there, and um, Ladies of P-Funk 
showed up. Mm-hmm. And uh, there's a, a band by the name of uh, Delta Nova. Oh, okay, yeah, I think I heard of them, yeah. Yeah, and um, actually, I believe the, the leader of that band was the organizer of the event. And, you know, it was, you know, it, it was basically, as far as I know, promoted primarily Internet and word of mouth, man, and for such the turnout. I mean, Long Beach is, is kind of a, it's an artist-friendly city anyway. But, it, it, man, it was just such a, a beautiful vibe, Joe, man. <laughs> it, it, you know, and uh, that really inspired me. You know, um, I wish that, uh, you know, that I played that one, you know, that you know, but it was really cool. So that, that thing that I'm most excited about, um, about the L.A. scene, um, being able to uh, see a lot of the artists. And, you know, last year uh, they didn't play, but uh, Baby Stone. Um, uh, they didn't play this year, but it's a band that's fronted by, uh, Sly's daughter. And, um, you know, they're really cool too. They got a really, really cool vibe to them. So, yeah. So, so things are looking up and positive. So, sounds like a modern day Budweiser Superfest. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 As a matter of fact, yes, yeah, it's, it's kind of like that, you know, right. and, uh, and my whole, you know, my whole intro really to the live uh, music thing and what really pulled me in to wanting to be an artist was my older brother and uh, my now sister-in-law taking me to a funk festival. Uh-huh. And, you know, you know so, you know, it was kind of like a throwback to those days, you know, because the one I went to, you know, you know P-Funk was there, Bootsy, yeah, the Barcades were there. Um, Rick James was there, Confunction was there, you know, and, uh, man, <laughs> you know, after that, you know, it was over for me, you know, yeah. uh, it's like, yeah, I know what I want to do, Ma. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> no one's stopping me. Yeah, 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 exactly, exactly, man. I've been, I've been jacked up ever since. Uh, Stevie Martin from Chocolate Music out of Los Angeles is our special guest and always nice to have Stevie on. Um, we're going to play something. We got a lot of music off the record to play. Um, we're going to get into sexy lady right now from, from the album. People want the same things and people can, uh, go to cdbaby.com. Just type in chocolate music and bring you right to the CD. The CD is also available from iTunes and Rhapsody and the official chocolate music website, chocolatemusicla.com. Um, any, any other sites you want me to, or you want to mention? Yeah, you can also check out, uh, www.doingthedo.com. Okay. Uh, stay, stay tuned uh, for that one. Um, you know that that one's in perpetual development. You know it's uh, you know it's going to be about uh, a lot of other things production wise. I'm into. So hopefully, you know, you guys will hear something you dig on there. I dig it. That's right. So uh, we'll get into this right now. Come back and speak once again with Stevie Martin. Another great one from Chocolate Music. People want the same thing. Stevie Martin is with us. And, uh, yeah, you bring in the real funk. No faking it right there. No, no, I want to want to keep the size of my nose uh, within a, a decent smelling range. <laughs> if, you get, if you get too far outside of the smelling range, then uh, you might not get the, the funk you want to smell. That's That's right. Uh, you know, you know, from the uh, the artwork on the record, uh, dripping on the wax, and uh, you know, you got that that forty five, the little plastic thing holding the forty five records together. When I got into radio, you know, that that's cool to see stuff like that. I mean, how, how about uh, your first concert, seeing live music? I mean, you mentioned the big festival. Was that the first concert you went to? Um, was that the first concert I went to? That was. Actually, wow, I believe the second concert, you know, and, and the first one that I went to is like a really, really vague memory. I remember being like small, man, uh-huh. and and uh, seeing the temptations at the forum. And, you know, it's one of those things where, you know, <laughs> I, I have to ask my older sister, like, yo, was that really real or... 
or, or do did I dream that? You know, but so I but I think that the uh, that the Funk Festival, yeah, that was uh, pretty much um, my baptismal to uh, you know Funk live in person at you know. Well, you, level, yeah. well you, yeah. you saw the Temptations. That 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 that's a great group in itself. Oh yeah. 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 You know, you know, I think I was probably too young to to really truly appreciate it, but you know, I think I'm sure that it touched me somewhere in the subconsciousness, you know. Right. I, I think I was the same way with when I was working in, in radio in Bridgeport here at WNEB. I I went to uh, see James Brown and Wilson Pickett and met both of them backstage in between the shows. And back then I didn't realize like, wow, you know, how powerful and the legacy until I, I got older and I, you know, love the music. Same, same, probably the same feeling. Oh yeah. Wow. You know, James Brown and Wick, Wick and uh, the Wicked one. Yeah, that's, that's right. <laughs> James Brown had his hair up in curlers and said to me, uh, God bless you, son. Oh, yeah. wow. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I, re- I remember that, yeah. That's a memory. Yeah. Hey, <laughs> hey tell me about, I mean, a lady who just recently passed away, obviously uh, dear to you, Malia Franklin. Um, oh. What oh. what did she mean to you? And uh, tell us about, you know, influence in your music and, and your life. Wow. That one, um, for me, that one was uh, a... Uh, a, a really deep with Malia and I, you know, she was, um, she, she and I were really connected, like on a spiritual level, man. You know, it's just one of those things, you know, the, you know, I guess it's just certain people that you meet with and there's just this instant connection. And, uh, Mal used to have this thing where we would just have these, I don't know, these crazy synchronicities and she would just start. <laughs> doing the Twilight Zone thing, <laughs> you know, so, you know, we were really connected, you know, on, on a spiritual level, man, and, you know, I, I miss her dearly and think about her every day, and, uh, but she left me with a whole lot of positives, mm-hmm. and um, from the live side, she really... She made me a more disciplined musician because Malia did not play. She came from P-Funk. She was really serious about uh, about the legacy and representing when she played P-Funk. You know, so she was real about that. And uh, <laughs> she was pretty straightforward. Mm-hmm. You know, she, you know, there was... Uh, you know, there wasn't a whole bunch of uh, pulling punches with right. her. You know, so I wanted to be on point, man. So I didn't get, so I didn't get the drill sergeant. Uh-huh. <laughs> you know? Yeah. So I, and then you know, and she had me uh, playing uh, the solo in in the pleasure principle. Uh-huh. You know, and uh, and Skeet played that down, man. And you know, for me to you know, have to follow a cat like that right. on the note, note. You know, she was really making me reach, mm-hmm. you know, so on that end. And um, also just really her sense of just sensitivity to, you know, when the lead singer is singing, you know, just, you know, just the little nuances of bringing it down. But at the same time, playing with that same groove and that same intensity, you know. Um, so you know, she gave me just some good lifelongs on that one. And uh, as far as you know, the studio is concerned, and being able to work with her on that tip, you know, um, I, you know, just from reading the album cover credits and everything, you know, you don't, you don't really get a a sense for, you know, how talented she actually really is. And and I I really didn't know, you know, when she would, you know, when she would, um, you know, direct me in a certain part to play, you know, yeah, (laughs) you know, she had a feeling together. She had a funk together for real. Mm -hmm. And she used to call producers reducers. Oh, really? 
Yeah, because you know they start with you know you know they start with everything and then just start reducing stuff. That's right. what they do. That reduces, you know. So, you know, she taught me, um, man. <laughs> she she really she helped me to really elevate my game. And you know, if I could play something for her that that I wrote and made her smile, you know, I knew it was all good. And you know, to have someone. Into who has that to be dealing with someone who has that sort of legacy, that sort of talent, and that much respect for music. You know, it just really, I feel really made me step up my game and also believe that that I belong, you know? So, um, so it was, it was really cool and got just you know just a lot of beautiful things really 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 beautiful beautiful lady mm-hmm. you know um she is she drove me crazy and i love her <laughs> <laughs> so she she's all over this record her influence i'm sure and uh we're gonna play another song right now from people want the same things and um uh, i'm being a little selfish because i'm playing my favorite tracks right now <laughs> but, uh, but I love this one because it's a nice slow jam, and uh, just right right in the middle of the record, and and it's called Angel. And, and talk a little bit about recording this one, and and uh, how did you put it together? Well, that one, um, I put that one together, man. I was really influenced by, um, you know, there uh, by funk bands that did just slow jams that I dig, like the Ohio Players mm-hmm. and uh, Cameo, the Barcades, and I think, you know, on that one, I wore my influences on my sleeve, you know, um, and, uh, you know, I just put it down, you know, it, it was really about a vibe, man, you know, um, I'd, like to, I'd like to find the lady that could make me feel that way in real time. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> so so Stevie Martin's our special guest and uh we'll be re-airing this at Upper Room with Joe Kelly dot com in a couple of weeks. Sign up for the mailing list and we'll let you know exactly when. And uh this is called Angel from People Want the Same Things, doing the do dot com and Steve will come back and talk once again. You got time, right? Yes, sir. There, put that focus on there. Great, great song from Chocolate Music Angel from the CD People Want the Same Things and uh Stevie Martin's with us, doing the do.com, and uh, you're doing the thing with chocolate music, and people can get it uh, downloads, CD Baby, and all sorts of things. We we first met Stevie when uh, he was an integral part of the band Rio Soul, Rio Soul now defunct, I believe, right? Yes, yes. Yeah. So uh, uh, the guys, you, you you run into some of the guys and work with some of the guys from Rio Soul, and tell tell us about that band and the. You know, the transition to everybody kind of going their old ways and still getting back together to, to make music in, in different projects. Well, uh, you know, the Rio Soul Band, uh, you know, I, uh, you know, the unit that uh, I was with them for uh, about about five years. We did two albums, mm-hmm. you know, um, and uh, some really, really talented cats. Um, <clears throat> You know those cats have uh, been been everywhere, played with everybody. You know, and we I, I got into that band in um, 2001, and um, you know we just we just banded as a uh, Rio Soul in 2005. But that same year, um, we uh, came back together um, as Controversy. Right, right, with a K, right? Yeah. Yes, yeah. yeah, controversy with the K. And uh you know, we did that that thing uh for a while, you know, um and uh we uh we had the addition of uh Miss Sue Ann Carwell. Mhm. Um you know, the the legend from uh, the legend herself from uh Minneapolis. And uh we did that I did that uh the controversy thing uh up until two thousand seven and uh you know, I, I still see the guys from time 
time, I, I, I still play uh, with uh, James Jeans Gardner, um, the guitar player from, from Rio Soul. And, you know, as a matter of fact, you know, he's been uh, working with me uh, in the Chocolate Music Band. And, um, you know, hopefully, uh, you know, we'll be taking it to the stage. Um, I'm looking at earlier next year, mm-hmm. you know, um, and uh, I also played with uh, Sue Ann. Jinx and I did. We were uh, we played with Sue Ann for a little bit uh, earlier this year, backing her up in, in her project. So, uh, and and right now we're talking uh, with the drummer from Rio Soul and uh, myself and Jinx and, and hopefully Barney Rebel. Just uh, this is all via email, right, right. <laughs> and, and and all very tentative and uh, and. Um, all in the dream stage right now, but hopefully, you know, I, I would love, I always love to get with those cats and play because that was just, it was just way too much fun getting on stage and being on the road with those characters right there. That, you know, that was, talk about laughing. <laughs> yeah, you guys did an East Coast tour. You had the bus. And I think in Philly, you had, uh, the bus, wasn't there like uh, somebody rammed into your bus or something like that? Oh, man. Are you, oh, Wow. Wow, you heard about that one? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I heard about yeah, that one. Yeah, 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 that's that's right. That's right. Um yeah, that we yeah, we, we saw right. you on that one actually. Right, right, yeah, right. actually you know what, Joe, we, we we played in Philly. Right. And uh you know, this this is actually my first time in Philly, man, you know, uh I want a cheesesteak. Right, right. So uh, <laughs> you know, we're like, let's go find a cheesesteak. So, you know, they uh there happened to be a, a like a, a a spot somewhere in Philly that had some uh, cheesesteak uh, at two a.m. So we were going to go get the authentic. <laughs> right, right. And uh, on the way to uh, to uh, on our quest for the cheesesteak, we were going down a street in Philly about one thirty or so in the morning, and uh, we were in this RV that had these retractable steps. And uh, they're supposed to retract automatically, but I guess they didn't. And, uh, you know, all I know is I felt something, you know, I I felt a thud and, you know, got the whole something ain't right vibe. And, uh, yeah, sure enough, the the, the, uh, the steps took out somebody's tires, man. So we had to, you know, get their tires fixed and, you know, exchange pleasantries and whatnot at 1.30 in the morning. And, uh I never did get the authentic cheesesteak, man. Oh man! Yeah, you have to come back here and uh, to to get the real one. I, I lived in Philly for a couple of years. Great, great city for the funk and everything like that. All right, cool, cool. Yeah, you know, I'm a, I'm looking forward to uh, to coming back out there. I mean, not just for the uh, the cheesesteak, but that is a void in my life right now. Uh huh. <laughs> yeah, but you got some you got some great places out in uh, L. A. Oh yeah, I mean you know we, we I mean you know we got all we you know we we've, we've got mad cuisine out here, Joe. Right, right. Really, really uh, diverse ethnic wise as far as you know all different cultures. I got a lot of my family out in the LA area, so yeah. Right, right. So, you know, uh, yeah. You're uh, you you stayed out here for a little while, no? No, I, believe it or not, I've never been to California. That's wild. Yeah, <laughs> that's that's not right. Yeah, yeah I, no, that's that's not right at all, man. That's yeah, not right at I, all. I lived in Taiwan a few years, but I've never been to to L.A. or California. I got to get out your way. Wow, you've yeah. been to yeah. Taiwan. Yeah, and lived there. Yep. Yeah. Well, you know, I can't holler at you though. I can't get mad because Taiwan's not on the way. <laughs> you know, so no. if, if if I heard that you went all the way to Taiwan and didn't stop by Harbor City, man, I would have been upset. Yeah, yeah, yeah. you definitely would have held that against me. Yeah, it's like come see a brother Joe. Right, that's you, right. You you said we was dogs. <laughs> no, we still are. Yeah. So we got to let people know uh, Chocolate Music, the official website, chocolatemusicla dot com. Doing the do d o i n the do d o dot com, and uh, Stevie Martin, the CD, Chocolate Music. People want the same things and. Uh, you can go to cdbaby.com, iTunes.com, and uh, you're looking to take it out on the road in the early part of the year, putting the band together, and 
what 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 kind of feel to the to the band and what kind of instruments and it's going to be on, on the road uh for chocolate music well we're working with uh two guitar players uh-huh um bass uh uh key uh one keyboard player drummer and uh two backup singers but you know what's cold about that Joe is I've actually had to uh chill for about two months because uh, I haven't been able to play because of my hand. Yeah, t- tell us about that and, you know, what, what's been going on. Well, you know, Joe, I, you know, I was actually trying to uh, change up my technique and uh, and do, do some different things, like on the bass, man, you know, and I guess, you know, just, just bad habits, man, just not, just not, practicing the right way, man, and my hand did not appreciate it and went on strike. You know, uh-huh. it, the, the combination of uh, bad bass playing mechanics and NBA Live, right. uh, you know, in, you know the video games, man, you, right. know, so, uh, you know, it wasn't good. My hand went on strike, <laughs> and, uh, you know, I, I'm feeling better, though, man. I've, I've uh, you know, just recently, actually, this past weekend is the first time I actually picked up a bass in about two months, you know. Um, but, I, you know, I'm not trying to get any uh, lifelong uh, tendon damage. So I'm just chilling, man, and just, you know, trying to approach it a little bit uh, a little bit more uh, insightfully, if you will. Now, now uh, let me ask you this. You, what's your go-to bass that you're always, uh, you know, if someone came and, and stole that, you'd be... Extremely mad or extremely hurt. What, what's your go-to bass? Uh, my my go-to bass is my Fender Jazz uh-huh. um, that I'm playing right now, man. You know that one, uh, that one right now. Me and that particular bass are real cool, man. You know, I'm I'm digging the range of sounds that I'm I'm getting out of this, and you know, and uh, you know, I, I, I like the way she looks and everything too. You know, so it's good. You know, that's uh. It's my number one girl right now, man. That's that's the go to. I didn't have it when I was on the East Coast swing. Uh-huh. You know, um and and actually uh I wanna get one just like it with a longer neck. But uh but yeah, that's my go to right now. Now now I take it you're a you're an NBA basketball fan. Yes, yes sir, I am an NBA basketball okay. fan. Okay. your team the Lakers? I am a Laker fan. I'm I'm a lifelong. Okay, I'm a, I'm a Nick fan. So, uh, well, you guys obviously got a better team the last few years. Um, but what, what's LA? Uh, how do you how do you see the season for LA this year? I think um, I think you know, in one way, it, it I'm it's kind of like I want to let's just get the regular season over because I don't every all the talent. It just seems like it just moved to every. Why did everybody go out east? Right, you know, right. you know, Stoudemire's with your boys now. Yeah. I, I don't know if Carmelo Anthony is there yet, but I know they were talking about him going there. You know, right, right. This um, you, yeah. know, you got uh, you know, the the Super Three in Miami. You know, and you know, there's nobody out west, man. In the uh, in the east is is mad deep. You right. know, so. But and but I still say don't discount Boston, you know, on the East. You know, um, I just don't see anybody in the West having the depth to tangle with the legendary Los Angeles Lakers. Now, now I'm seeing on TV when I see the Lakers, it always looks like they've got something cool with the the lights on the court, but the stands it looks primarily like it's dark. Do they do some with the lights? Um. I don't know. You know maybe, maybe I'm just I'm just saying things. <laughs> <laughs> it looks different than like you know other other arenas. It's like you know the yeah, spotlights they, on the. Yeah, they probably have like some hypnotic effect going on. They probably got like you know some some subliminal type of light sequencing going on. You know. Right. Right. <laughs> so the season yeah, but- starts. I know tomorrow night, uh, Boston against Miami. I got to root for. For, I think it's Boston against Miami. Yeah, I yeah. Well, you, you, oh man, you know, I'm just a basketball fan, man. I can't bring myself to ever say that I'm going to root uh-huh. for Boston, but 
But, you know, man, Paul Pierce is from Inglewood, you know, so uh-huh. I, I got, I have to, you know, I have to give him, you know, some love. Right, you know? right. So, yeah. so uh, go Inglewood. <laughs> That's right. Represent for Inglewood. And, uh, yeah, we, we want to thank Stevie Martin for coming by once again. Hopefully we'll have him in the studio. It's been a while since you've been here on the East Coast. But uh, thanks for another great record, Chocolate Music's People Want the Same Things. Thank you, Joe, man. And thank you so much for all the love and support. You know, um, much appreciated. And uh, if anybody out there hears the music, I hope you feel it. Yeah, and you can get it, the CD, at cdbaby.com, iTunes, and also Rhapsody, doing the do.com and chocolate music la.com. Stevie Martin, bassist, guitarist, vocalist, keyboardist, percussion. Hey, you, you do just about everything. So uh, thanks as always, brother. And uh, th- this song, you know, I, I, I love the, the whole CD, but this is uh, definitely uh, one of my favorites off at the Hollywood Bump. Be nice to have a video for this one. Ha <laughs> you know what? Uh huh. Uh huh. That might be realer than you think. Um, <laughs> you know, hopefully in the, uh, you know, within the next uh, few months, man, that's actually something that's in the works. You know, so uh, that's one of the reasons, another reason I'm laying low right now, so hopefully real soon, man. Yeah, get get that hand well and get out there thumping, laying down that funk. Thank you, sir. Stevie Martin. Thanks, brother. Thank you. <laughs> 